basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just give you guys some advice and some tips on what camera to start off with and what's the best camera, depending on what it is you do and what it is you're trying to shoot. So we're gonna give two different perspectives and hopefully, you know, you guys can gain some insight from this information. All right, so like I said, I get this question a lot and- He gets annoyed. He gets tired when he answers this question all the time. I, it's not that I hate the question. Yes, you do. This is the thing, it doesn't matter. If you're first, if you're starting off, my opinion is it doesn't really matter what camera you start off with. Because at the end of the day, no matter what camera you use, you're gonna learn it, you're gonna understand it. Like just just get a camera, just shoot. Like if it's your first camera, don't worry about all the specs. Just make sure it shoots whatever, 1080 or you're trying to do video, just the basic, basic features. Because I'm saying ground zero, it doesn't matter. That's true. Because at the end of the day, I mean, obviously you have like your top brands, Canon, Sony, Panasonic, um, I'm, I'm not even gonna put Nikon in there. I'm sorry. I might offend somebody. But wow. When it comes to video, we're not doing Nikon. How many? I, th I thought you meant in general. Oh no, photography Nikon is cool, but for video, we're not. Nikon's not coming up. In Nikon this has some good videos with the Z6. What is that? It's the latest Nikon uh, camera to come out, and the latest mirrorless camera. Oh. The Z6 and the Z7. I don't. I like. I don't. I don't keep up with that. Sorry. So, like I said, again, like I said, I don't think it really matters too much on what camera you use. As a beginner. As a beginner. You know, I think the main thing is learn your ISO, learn your aperture. shutter, and learn your aperture. Just learn how to explain. Learn how to use your camera. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't know how to use your camera at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what specs comes with your camera, it doesn't matter what features, blah, blah, blah. You could give somebody a $1,500 camera, and they could make a video that looks like it was made on a flip camera. Right. You give somebody a thousand dollar camera and it'll you get the same reaction. I've actually seen that happen. And I've seen people with like T five eyes make videos that were featured on M T V. Yeah. Videos that are featured on B E T. Yeah. So yeah. it what it comes yeah. it doesn't come down to the camera, it comes down to do you do not use your equipment. And, and are you creative enough? And your story. And the yeah. story. And uh, the yeah. content. The content is king, yeah. you know. Um, you can have the best equipment in the world, but if you don't have anything interesting to shoot or anything someone want to care about, you don't want to watch it. You don't want to watch it. Like, like no point yeah. to having a fifteen hundred dollar camera. You don't know how to use it. Yeah. Or you don't have anything that someone wants to watch when it comes to it. Exactly. So you know, focus on the story. Focus, focus on the content. Um, so I think that's pretty much sums it up. I'm not gonna make this like I said. I want to make this video too long. I think that pretty much sums it up. I think we agree on that. Yeah. Um, if you're like in the let's say five to six hundred dollar range, for us, if you're starting off. That would be the minimum we would recommend you spend if you're trying to get somewhat professional. Yeah. You know, if if your budget, if you're trying to go two, three hundred dollars, I'm sorry, just keep saving. Don't even waste your money. Like you're not going to find nothing in that price range. <laughs> we can't help you. <laughs> we can't help you. You can't even get a lens for that price range. You gotta loan a camera. Yes, you can. Ooh, you, can six, you, don't want. you can get the 16 millimeter. Uh, who would use that? That's a you, that's you, a you use it all the time. Man. Don't I don't you, know what you're talking about. Bad. That's a crappy thing. Where's your camera bag? Chill. <laughs> I use the Sony 16 millimeter 2.8. It's a good lens. If you're starting no, off not. with Sony, if it's the it's the if in there. If you're coming from Kit. No, it's not. Jesse. It's literally the same quality as a kid lens. But no, an aperture. That makes a big difference. You're going from what? 5.6 to 2.8? You're going from 3.5. 3.5 to 2.8 is a big difference when you're shooting weddings in low light. So if you're if you're uh we would recommend minimum spending five to six hundred dollars on a camera you know anything less than that just keep saving your money so what camera would you recommend to get at that range uh right now i believe the sony a63 used yeah yeah five seventy eight. yeah around 578 at around a, as far as 2019 February. okay yeah but whatever you said so um if that's your range that's what we recommend again we're not saying Sony's the best. We're not saying Sony's the only way to go, but we prefer to shoot with Sony because yeah. it fits what we need. And the reason why I personally recommend the 6300 is because you get 4K, and as far as media online and on TV, it's moving. It's moving towards 4K being the minimum format. Right. So when you get the A6300, you get a camera with 4K in it already, and so you're basically locked in to, as time progresses and as resolutions move up, you're already locked in to being able to make, to create content that will fit that format in the future. So, as y'all know me, well, people follow me, I have a 6500, you know, that is like, that's not even like one of the top cameras that Sony have. But the thing is, 
it doesn't really matter. Yeah. If you know how to, you know, color, expose, frame your shot, have good content, tell a story, people will never know. You know, I book all kind of jobs, you know, from low level to like high corporate jobs, all using that one little camera. Yeah. So, yes, it has limitations. Yes, I do want to upgrade in the near future, but, you know, I'm not like in a super rush because it gets the job done. And you tried. I mean, we all have spent hours and hours researching cameras online. And the most frustrating thing is you can never find a camera that does everything you want to do. So you're going to have to compromise. There's no camera that has everything. What cameras? Okay, so right now, like I said, I have the a 65 You had the a 73 mm -hmm. What camera are you? would you want to upgrade to and why? I'm waiting for the a 73 That is the biggest thing that I'm... Me too. Why my fingers across Me too. Because if you know about... For people who don't know about the a 73 the a 73 has great autofocus. It has a great battery life. Like it just, all the features that it has, the quality that comes out of it, the customization, which personally I love. I know some people are against being able to customize too much because they feel like it gets too confusing. But for me, I feel like I can tailor my camera to operate the exact way that I want it to. Right. Um, it's just like all around, like even for photography, the photo that comes out of it is great. Yeah. The photos that comes out of it is great. Yeah. A lot of people are gonna complain about Sony colors, but I feel like with the third generation, they got it right. The only thing that it lacks is 4K60. That's yeah. the only thing that I want. And if they want to throw in a, a screen that can flip out, so that we don't have to do yes. the setup that we have right now, yeah. Yeah. that would be nice too. I basically agree with you, like with your camera. Like if anything, if I was upgrade, I would go to the A7 III if I was upgrade right now. But personally, I'm just kind of, like I've heard a lot of rumors that the A7S III is supposed to come out in March or April. So I'm just, going to patiently wait until that time to see when that drop, because whenever that drop, there's a good chance I'm probably going to hop on that. All right, so again, if you're starting off as a videographer, my personal opinion, let's say you have a thousand dollar budget, A6300 used, use the kit lens, um, depending on what you're shooting, invest maybe like in a little LED light, something like that, invest like in a Rode video mic, something for audio, and a tripod. Although, one quick note not to cut you off. Yeah. I've noticed that the mics in the A7 III and the A6500 mm -hmm. are actually decently good. Like, you could get away with using those microphones in camera. I, I don't think so, bro. I've been in a lot of weddings on those cameras and listen to the audio, like, from hotel rooms and stuff. And it's it's a big difference. It is a, it's a, I'm not saying it's not a noticeable difference, but I'm, it's usable. You think it's usable? I, yeah, I mean, I've used it, so I guess it is usable. Yeah, So I've, I've used it. Yeah, and the last one that I did, my mic battery died, so I had no choice. But right, we're going to wrap this video up. Like, again, guys, thank you for watching. Um, I hope this helped. Um, I tried to put a lot of information in this video so you guys can get a good idea of how to start if you're starting off doing videography. Hey, if you still look, <laughs> if you still, you know, have any questions, just feel, feel free to leave some in the comments, ask me a question, or just DM me. Follow me on Instagram, YouTube. All my info is right here, and I also have Jesse's contact if you guys you know want to check out his stuff too. Um, he does really dope, dope work, so you know if anyone else is looking for a videographer or looking to learn, he does. He has a lot of great content. Um, somewhere, yeah, somewhere online in the internet universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, guys, again, thanks for watching, and yeah, peace.